Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, I am still Angie. This is still 4F Beauty. Hopefully you are watching me in black and white right now. Don't panic, I'm not about to drop a house on the witch to steal her shoes. This is the latest in a retro review. It's a retro review series with my beautiful friend Alexis, Hope Modesty. And this month, oh, we're going colourful. It's the Urban Decay Wired palette. Their replacement for the electric. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours I've used, how well or otherwise this performed, well, of course, how this looks in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, it would appear you have the best seat in the house. As Sammy the Sloth Straw is back by popular demand to tell you it is time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Here comes the film. Hey my lovelies, I am back from the intro that clearly I haven't filmed yet. Uh, it's been so overcast today that I just basically waited until it's a bit darker so I've got overhead lights on as well as the lights behind the camera so hopefully you should be able to see what's happening today. Um, as I explained in the intro, using the Urban Decay Wired palette today in the uh, retro review with Alexis, Hope Modesty. This is their kind of replacement for their electric palette. And the reason it's split, I don't know if you can see there's a, there's, a, this, there's a box around this four and a box around this six. These six are eye safe, these ones technically are not. Um, that's because this is sold in America and they have not updated their FDA guidelines yet. Basically, if you've got sensitive skin, it may stain, it may irritate, um, but as far as Europe's concerned, it is safe for eye use, just be careful like you would if it was a glitter. Uh, it's because it's, all of them have got an element of red in it, and because this is cruelty free, and therefore can't use carmine or cochineal, which is the traditional um, ingredient used for red, which is basically ground down beetles, I know. Um, the synthetic red they use can cause staining, can cause mild irritation. Um, so of course obviously red has got red in it, pink is red and white, orange is red and yellow, purple is red and blue. I'm teaching my grandmother to suck eggs here. But um, this is a series that I started on my channel a while ago. I uh, only managed to get around to doing two episodes of it because of all the other films that I had going um, and after doing a, a pick with me Alexis said could we do a monthly collab together uh, we've missed a couple of months when she was moving and when I wasn't well so um, but we basically the first Thursday of every month is if we've got a collab going up that's when it'll go up um, and it's basically although you will have seen from my hauls that I've got a lot of new palettes mm -hmm. 
a lot of the new palettes that I've got are actually older palettes but new to my collection so it's palettes that I've lusted after for a while like um, Sigma Untamed and Dominique Cosmetics Rustic Glam etc so you know there's there's a lot of, of palettes which technically are retro but as well as the new to my collection I do have a lot of palettes a lot of which you don't really see much of on on YouTube now because these bigger good beauty gurus get sent all the PR or try and keep on top of all the new releases and that's how they keep their channel going I don't get PR except from occasionally September Rose um, and occasionally Gerard Cosmetics will put a credit on my account for me to use um, but that's it everything else is either bought by myself or was a gift to me from either my husband or a friend or a family member so I like using my older palettes but you never see them you get a flurry of use when the palette first comes out and then you unless unless someone doing a shop their stash every month you don't really get to see much of the older palettes and with my palettes once a month I go through and spritz them all with um, isopropyl alcohol so that removes any kind of impurities or bacteria from the shadows so I don't mind using one that's more than 12 months or 24 months old because I know that it's clean a lot of my palettes when you see me use them I clean them before I put them away because when I open a palette I like it to look new if it looks messy or scruffy I don't I don't feel like using it. it. It needs to look pristine. It needs to look clean for me to want to use it. I, it's just, I guess that's how my Asperger's comes out or autism or whatever. Undiagnosed at the moment, still waiting for assessment. But um, I've had a number of different people who have got Asperger's including my mother-in-law who's a nurse and uh, both of her kids as in hubby and brother-in-law um, have Asperger's so she knows what she's talking about and she said to me she thinks I'm definitely on the spectrum anyway that's how mine comes out um, this remains a teaching channel so I'm going to insert the clip in just a minute where I talk you through the shape or the differences between hooded eyes and uh, deep set eyes because a lot of people with deep set eyes are mistakenly told or mistakenly believe they have hooded lids when they don't and although um, eyeshadow wears on them in a very similar manner it's not the same so the way you apply the shadows in the first place to get the best longevity is slightly different so I'll talk you through that. It will be just my eyes on screen, that's how I like to do my tutorials. So that if you're watching me on a phone screen and your eyesight's not what it used to be, you can still see what's going on. It does mean when I'm looking down to clean my brush or add more pigment, you get a lovely shot of my widow's peak but it's quite pretty and not everyone has one. so. Um, it makes it a little bit more interesting to look at than just a straight hairline, maybe? Anyway, enough blethering, otherwise this film will be ridiculously long. I'm probably going to have to cut out half of what I've said already. Here's the clip on eye shape. Remember, just my eyes on screen. And I'll be back at the other end of it to start applying coloured pigments to my eyelids. So I'll see you in just a moment. Now, um... My eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in 
blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. I'm going to use some of my brushes that I got from Cosmic Brushes because I love them. See this? Watch, watch, watch. Oh! I could just sit here and play with these brushes all day long. I just love them. Anyway, uh, this is It doesn't have a name on it or anything or a number, but it's basically a big fluffy brush. 
whatever the width of the head that's how far it will blend the shadow out so that helps you decide which size brush you need to use if you've got less area to play with than I have then use a slightly smaller brush and yes my eyes are starting to water already today which is just great Right, I'm going to start off by going into Let's just swatch those two together Yeah, I like that So I'm going to go into Shock first Which is the Lilac There's a fair amount of kick up In that pan But that doesn't bother me because I just tap back off into the pan and then pick up any excess to build colour up or do the other eye. <clears throat> um, you can see I've got pigment on the end of the brush there. Now I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz blend. So hold the brush right at the end. If the handle's long enough, brace it against the heel of your hand there or the, the pad of your fingers, the heel of your fingers there. So you've got a little bit more stability and this end isn't waving around too much. Uh, that stops you from putting too much pressure on your lid and pulling the eyes around too much. Now the Viennese Waltz is basically natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there and then reverse turns to come back again rather than just the windscreen wiper. The reason I do this is I'm 47 years old, I've lost over 200 pounds in weight the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers that have exactly the same issue. By using the Viennese Waltz blend, we are gently manipulating the skin on the eye, first in one direction and then the other, so you don't get that telltale white striping where the lid has folded over on itself. I'm going to start halfway between my crease and my brow. Now, when I'm doing these, during the tutorial part, I concentrate on the tutorial. I'll talk more about Alexis at the end of the film. So, start here and just start gently building the colour up. Now, it's, I have to admit, it's been so long since I've used this palette that um, I can't remember which shadows need building and which ones don't. So. Yay me. Uh, I do have dry patches just here and here on both eyes. That can sometimes be a bit of an issue when I'm applying um, makeup. It can make it look a little bit patchy. But at the moment, we seem to be doing okay. You can see that's blending out really nicely, nice and softly. So, who watched RuPaul's UK Drag Race Series 3? If you haven't, spoilers, I'm going to talk about the final. Was that not the most predictable winner ever? All through the series, Rue's made her liking for skinny white twinks very, very obvious. And we all know who was going to win right from probably halfway through the series. Because there were times when I would have put that queen in the bottom too. And for some reason they were safe against other queens that had made more of an effort. I thought uh, Theresa May was kicked out far too early, as was River Medway. But um, I'm seriously contemplating not watching any more of the UK. Drag races because, well, for a start off, 
we're like second class citizens over here. In America they get all these cash prizes, they get spot prizes like free wigs, free corsets, free dresses, free jewellery. Over here, being the winner each week, you get a cheap tin badge, it's probably worth about 50p. And the overall winner doesn't get 10 grand or 100 grand or 75 grand, no. And they get to go to America and do a podcast thingy. Wow. Big whoop. Thanks. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <sighs> Sorry. I just, I had to vent. Had to vent. Ignore that there, it's because I'd just I'd washed my hair and I've had the towel on and it was creased just at those points. Uh. Right, I'm going to clean my brush off because I'm going to use this again for the next colour. I always use a microfiber cloth or a flannel or a, a washcloth or an old towel that's gone home, you know, got holes in it and cut that up into the right size square, you know. I used to use colour switches but they're so harsh on the bristles of your brushes, especially if you've got natural haired brushes. These are synthetic that I'm using today so that's not too bad. Right, now I'm going to go into fluorescent which is the turquoise, it's not green enough to be a teal, it's a turquoise. Although, against this, it does look more green. Now, I always find when I'm blending two colours together, I like to try and concentrate on where they meet first. And get a really good blend there before continuing the colour across. I just find that it blends better that way. at least that's what I think anyway yeah so this wired palette is basically the, um, the replacement for the electric palette which I still have from Urban Decay um, I have to admit I'm not as Urban Decay don't pull me in like they used to I mean you look back at some of their early days stuff they really were cutting edge they were you know breaking boundaries and now it's just you know, same old same old I think the last one of theirs that I bought was Naked Honey yeah it's the last one that I bought um, I was tempted by the ultraviolet until I realised that the only mattes were neutrals. There were no purple mattes in it. So I'm like, well, what's the point in that then? You can see these are actually blending together really quite nicely and quite easily without... Sometimes when you blend two colours together you can find that where you've already blended the edges of the first shade, when you then blend the second shade into it you can almost blend the first shade away and, and lose pigment. But that doesn't seem to be the case with this which is good. It seems to be holding its pigment nicely. I mean that's one thing that Urban Decay could always do, they could always do a good saturated colour where you can control it by putting less on your brush if you want to start off gently but you could really build them up to very very powerful shades if you want that 
I must admit, I'd be interested to see what Alexis does with this. Because there aren't really many neutrals in this. She may go for a warm, orangey, ready yellow. Because she has got like an olive undertone skin, so obviously warm colours do suit her more than cool tones. Whereas with me, I've got a neutral to cool undertone, so I find that um, I prefer cooler tones on myself, but, you know. Right. Clean this off. Now I'm going to go in with a much, much smaller blending brush. Look at the difference in the size of the heads there. Because this I wanted to give me a nice blown out look. This I want to have control over where it goes. But, first, you need to play with the black glitter in the handle. Because I just have to. Because it's just too pretty not to. Right, okay. Right. I'm going to go into um, one of the shimmers in here, or satins, to do this crease shade. You can do that. Depending on the brush you use, you can actually use shimmers through a crease without it really drawing attention to any fine lines because if you use a blending brush rather than a packing brush it almost leaves the base colour, the base pigment but blends some of the shimmer away so I've gone into the green called Current I'm just going to start off just on this outer corner here And just initially blend that where my crease is and slowly build it and blend it into the lilac and then bring it down a little bit onto the outer edge of my mobile lid. And then I'm going to continue this through the crease and bring it back again. Just gently blend that. And you can see, although it is a shimmer, has actually blended quite nicely into that particular area and just gives that little flash of green on the outer edge which is what I wanted. They're really pretty. So same thing this side. Start off by blending right at the crease. Obviously, if you've moved your crease and you're creating a new crease, this is the shade that you then take through wherever your new crease is. Because this is probably one of the darker shades I'm going to use, even though it's not that dark. Because I really want a nice, bright, vibrant look today. So I could have gone into Chaos which is that sort of indigo-y, purpley blue or blurple. But that would have been a bit obvious for me and it would have been a little bit darker than I wanted to go. Um, I wanted to keep it very sort of 70s John Travolta, Saturday Night Fever, 
bright. To really take advantage of the bright shades. Now with this eye, you can see I've got very deep creasing just here and even the circular movements doesn't stop the tiger stripe creasing. When I put the shadow onto my lid, I will have to break my own rule about stretching that lid out. But when we get to that stage, I will show you how I do it in such a way that I cause as little additional damage to the lid as possible. Making sure both sides look the same. This is why I don't do one eye and then do the other eye afterwards. I do them sort of concurrently. Because I get random swellings from fibro. I get puffiness here and there. And your eyes are not mirror images anyway, unless you do a Jimmy Chuck and Photoshop them that way. Sorry, just cleaning this brush off. So, there are times when you have to do a slightly different shape in order to get the colours looking the same when your brows are relaxed. So, now because I want this to punch as much as possible, I'm actually going to use some glitter glue. And yes, I found my next glitter glue after buying another one. Sort of law, huh? some of this out. It's been a while since I'd used it. Yeah, it gone a bit sticky. Probably because I forgot to wipe it last time when I put it away. to use nail art brushes for when I'm working in the crease with anything like a glitter glue because they go super super flat. Look at that side view. Okay. This is a number eight. I've just got to look look at my little twiddly thing of Way more than I'm ever going to need. But I had to get the dry stuff out of the nozzle. So, just going to apply some of this glitter glue to the two thirds of my crease that so far have not been blessed with pigment. I'm not cutting my crease as such, I'm just, I want to give the shimmer as much oomph as I can. So I'm going to go into a jolt. Which is this gorgeous chartreuse yellowy green. And I'm going to pop that actually on that grab a slightly more bristly brush. That is to uh, 
blow the pigment. There we go. Pretty, 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 pretty. I like. Right, let's clean the pigment off of the brush that I'd used. Now, with the other eye, as I said, I do have to break my own rule about stretching the eyelid out. What I do is I literally only pull it out far enough to straighten the creasing. I don't pull it out round my lug hole. I hold it there and then I gently release it back. I don't say spring back. I kind of have to do this lid in two halves because I have to do the bit where the creasing is first. Otherwise I end up wiping away the green that I've got applied at the end there. So I continue to hold the lid. If I don't do this, what happens is that the pigment collects loosely in the creasing and then throughout the day as it dries and as I move my eye, it flakes down into my eye and down my face and it's painful and looks horrid. So you can see I gently let the lid go rather than just letting it spring back and now I can do the remainder of the lid without pulling it out just like I did the other lid wondering what brush this is, it's a Voldemorphy Jafar Starfish and it's the God he wrote it on here in really pale writing JS 20 something 24 yeah you got a pale pink handle and you're going to write on it in pale white writing. Good choice there, thanks. And again just smooth that over. How cute is that? Right, my beautiful babies, I am going to pause you while I go off screen and put some foundation and bits and bobs on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I'm going to have a little bit of a time before I can chat to you again. But for you, my darlings, it's going to be completely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. I used gravity on my brows, which is one of the not safe for the eyes colours. And now I'm going to go into another one of the not safe for the eyes colours to do under here. This is another one of those cosmic brushes. They are amazing. I've actually got their one of their um, 
palettes on the way that I bought over the uh, Black Friday weekend. Uh, I think I'll go into Switch, which is the orange. I know that'll please Miss Nona. On this little stubby brush. And just run this along. Underneath the eye. Because when my eyes are watering again today, I don't put anything on the waterline itself. Or risk a liner. So normally for this I put either a white or a silver liner on, like a wing. But I'm afraid you're just going to have to imagine that today. and bright. Okie dokie darlings. Now it's time to get a tiny wee brush. Which I know I've got over here somewhere. Where have we gone? Now this is a cheap lip brush that I bought well over a decade ago and I'm going into my Jacqueline The Flash palette and I think I'm going to go into this one for the inner corner and I think I'll blend this one and this one for my cheek This is Gleam. I will admit, if there's one thing that Jacqueline can do, these baked highlighters, uh, the ones from Italy, she needs to start releasing these as singles, they're amazing. Because you all know that I am a bit of a I'm a bit of a Teresa is dead in that respect. It's like I was like an alien slurred. I want to be so bright I'm not just dazzling the gods, I'm completely blinding them so they can't see what I'm up to. Lush. Right, my darlings, I'm going to pause you one last time. Pop some more of this highlight on. Mascara, lippy do something with the hair which is probably going to stick up in a hundred thousand different directions slight exaggeration but never mind and I will see you back here with my finished look and for you of course it's going to be completely instant I'll see you after this dissolvey, wibbly, wobbly kind of bit. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Hey, my lovelies, I'm back. This is my finished look with the wired palette. You knew I was going to go bright with this. You know, you know, huh? Okay. Um, other things on my face. The foundation is the Pure 4-in-1. Uh, I'm shade uh, L... L4, LP4, LD4. LP4. Light pink one. No, light pink 4. I'm so used to having to be the lightest and everything, where they're now coming out with bigger ranges, it confuses me. 
Um, the concealer is the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer in shade Porcelain. That is a really, really good dupe for shape tape, but it's not as drying under your eyes, which is nice. Uh, the powder I used, I used the NYX Colour Correcting Lavender Powder under my eyes because the dark circles were real today. And then the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder for the rest of my face because um, the Pure Foundation is a matte foundation so I want to bring a bit of life back. Uh, Physicians Formula uh, Butter Bronzer. My Nars Orgasm blush that I got from Shari. The lippy, or the, the mascara today is my Catrice Glam and Dull Waterproof, which is a, a bang on dupe for Bad Gal Bang, but it's a lot, lot cheaper and it's waterproof. Lippy is one of my Hourglass Confession Lippies in the, uh, the lilac packaging, and this is shade If Only. If only I hadn't just jabbed the top of that right into the lid. Donut. I really like the Hourglass Confession lipsticks. You don't get much in them, but they are so comfortable to wear. And because they're a thin stilo, you don't need to worry about lining your lips first. It's really easy to get the nice shape. Brows obviously is my, as always, pink honey, strawberry sherbet, and I told you which shade I used out of wired to colour them in. So, there we go, there's my finished look. Oh, setting spray today, I'm trying out a new one, I'm trying out the kimchi stage proof matte setting spray. Um, and I told you which colours of the Jacqueline highlight I was using. So good, so good. So, I wanted to know what Alexis has done. Um, she was, she tends to wear more neutral shades. She errs more on that side of things. Because obviously she, she works in an environment where if you turned up looking like this they'd probably think you'd had some kind of nervous breakdown. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see whether she goes full out colour or if she sticks to the more sort of reds and oranges which you can turn into neutrals. Um, sorry, this eye is really starting to water on me today. Um, and Wired does have this shade here, Glitch. It's just a pure white matte being blown out by the window. So you can use that to lighten any of these and turn them into a pastel. So I don't know whether she's going to do that as an option or what she's going to do but I am really really interested to find out. Uh, she works in the medical profession so I love hearing her take on skincare and things because she understands the ingredients. Um, which is always good to know. I need to have a bit of a wiggle where I'm in pain. Bear with, I'll cut the wiggle out probably. Ooh. Sorry folks, I'm back. Right. Um, yeah, she works in the medical profession. So I love hearing, she does a lot of um, unboxings of things like Ipsy and BoxyCharm and, you know, all the different um, mystery boxes and bags you can get in America. And it's always really interesting to hear her take on the, the different skincare, etc. Because she can tell you whether the ingredients in there are worth anything or if they're just on there because they sound fancy, you know? I'm going to have to, actually I've got a, I'm going to do a graveyard girl. 
tap my watery eye with my beauty blender which this end is, is washing so that's why I'm using the stubby end there we go so yeah I'm I I love collabing with Alexis um, I say this every month but I'm always amazed how she can manage to put foundation and whatnot on without getting it all over a hijab because it, I get it all over my hair sometimes so how she manages that is an absolute skill and you can see she's looked after her skin because she's got amazing skin as well so uh, I'm, I'm definitely paying attention to what she says when it comes to skincare and things um, but most of all I'm, I'm just I love making friends that I wouldn't necessarily have met. You know, she's in America, I'm in the UK. The chances of us actually physically having met, a lot slimmer than I am. Um, <laughs> but she's just such a lovely woman. She really is. And it's if you enjoy watching my films, then you will absolutely love watching hers. Um, just checking. Ah. Oh. You could have told me I had lipstick on my teeth. I mean, come on now. <sighs> so, if you are one of my regular 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you and they're leaving my films in your feed. So it's not obvious that you've actually been unsubscribed. I know it's difficult to tell sometimes with my erratic posting this year because of pain levels and everything. Uh, when you do that, it's also worth double checking your notification status because mine keeps getting knocked back to personalised, which means I don't get anything. Which is highly frustrating, as opposed to highly gabarous, so let's say who's an athlete. And that shows you how my mind works. <laughs> hmm. Once you've done that, do let me know in the comments whether you've got this palette and which colours you're drawn to. Um, and if you've done a look and put it up somewhere like Instagram or Twitter, do please send me the link because I'd love to be able to go and see it, see what you've done. You know how I love chatting with my 4F babies? Uh, if However, you are new here. Hi, hello, welcome. Uh, if you're one of the wildflowers, very welcome. This is the kind of thing you'll get from me. Um, I blether on about all kinds of everything. My mind jumps from one subject to another and back again. It occasionally goes for a walk without me, which is interesting. It usually comes back before the end of the film, but not always. So if you, um, if you think you can put up with some more of that, it would be lovely if you'd like to join the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube pull their finger out and actually send you some. In the meantime, as well as this rather ample backside upon which I am perched, I have a rather ample back catalogue of films you can be catching up on. Uh, there's previous retro reviews with Alexis. Um, I've got other collabs, challenges, tag films, product reviews, tutorials. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So hopefully there's going to be a playlist in that myriad that will tempt you. And if you're looking for a bit of me time, basically, I've said it forever. Grab a drink, grab a snack, get yourself comfy with your coffee and your croissant or your, your, your glass of fizz and a fig roll. The alliteration is real here. Pick a playlist, get comfy and just indulge for a bit. And listen to me witter on whilst usually applying coloured pigments to various parts of my face. Now my lovelies, what I'm going to need you to do 
if you haven't already come here from Alexis's channel, I'm going to need you to go across to her channel. She's linked in the description, both her channel and her film. And I'm going to need you to go across and watch her film and see exactly what look she has done. And I want you to give her the same amount of love and respect that you always give me in my comments section. You know, leave her a like, leave her a comment. If you haven't already subscribed to her, why not? She's amazing. You're missing an awesome creator by not being subscribed to her. And, uh, you know, do all the good youtuber -y things that I always like to think you'd be doing for me too. Liking, commenting, sharing. You know, all that good stuff. Right, my lovely ones. As ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.